Hi, and welcome to this math review video. In this section, we're going to talk about property dimensions and sizes. Let's start with a question that's very, very simple, just asking how many acres are in a particular parcel of property. For this question, it says how many acres are in a tract identified as the north half of the southeast quarter of the southwest quarter of the north half. Now, there's a little bit that's missing from this. Anytime you see a question like this, you have to remember that they're always talking about a section. And in, in every case, a section is 640 acres. So for this question, we're starting with 640 acres, and we're trying to figure out how big the piece is that's identified here in this particular question. So let's figure out how to do that. Basically, what we do is we start with the section, and we just simply divide by these bottom numbers. Now, sometimes people ask whether it's important to start from the beginning and work through to the back or to start from the back and work through to the beginning. In this case, it doesn't matter because the numbers are 2, 4, 4, and 2. So whether you start from the front or the back, it really makes no mathematical difference. In fact, whenever you're trying to figure out the number of acres in the section, it really doesn't make a difference. The only time it makes a difference is if you actually have to identify this on a map. If you're doing that, then you would always start from the back, the 640 acres or the section, and work towards the front. So let's do the math on this. Very simply, we've got 640 divided by 2, divided by 4, divided by 4, divided by 2, and your answer is 10 acres in this parcel. Moving along to the next question, dealing with dimensions, this question says that a property measures 420 feet along the highway and contains 12 acres. The question is, what is the depth of the tract? Well, you know that the formula for the area of the tract would be length times width or depth times width. And in this case, it tells you that the area or the size of the tract is, in fact, 12 acres. So you know the distance along the front is 420 feet. What you really need to find out is the other measurement or the depth. Here's how we'll do that. You know that something which is going to be what you're looking for here, the depth, times 420 feet, which is given to you in the question, equals 522,720 square feet. Well, where did we get that number? That wasn't in the question. It actually was in the question. The question told you that the property contained 12 acres. Well, you know that there are 43,560 square feet in one acre. So 12 times 43,560 gives you the 522,720 square feet that we're dealing with. In order to solve this, then whatever you're looking for here again, which is the depth, would equal 522,720 feet divided by 420 feet. And your answer here is that the depth of the property is 1,244.57 feet. Now, these questions are very simple to check your answer to make sure that you got it right. You know the formula is going to be depth times width. You knew that the original width was 420 feet, and you now know that the depth is 1,244.57. If you multiply those two numbers together, then you should get 522,720 square feet. Divide that by 12, I'm sorry, divide that by 43,560, and you'll find out that the answer is, in fact, 12 acres. As long as those numbers match, then you've proven that your answer is correct. Moving along to the next one. Again, a very similar question, but a little different wording in this one. It says a builder is developing a 550 by 970 foot piece of property. Each lot will be approximately 80 feet by 110 feet. Setback requirements will be 25,750 square feet. The pool will be 80 by 100, and the clubhouse will be 75 by 90. Then it says if each lot sells for $12,000, what will be the full amount realized by the builder? Let's take a look at what's actually happening here. You know that the overall size of the property is 550 by 970, so we can figure out how many square feet that equals. We know that each lot is going to be 80 by 110, and just in our heads, we can figure that's 8,800 square feet. Setback requirements are 25,750. What that means is that the builder can't use that or can't build lots on those setback requirements. The pool, nice big pool here, 80 feet by 100 feet, it's an 8,000 square foot pool. 
and the clubhouse is 75 by 90. So essentially, once you figure out these overall size of the property, you take out the setback requirements, you take out the pool, and you take out the clubhouse, that's going to tell you how many square feet the builder can or developer can use here for the actual lots. Divide that by the lot size and you'll know how many lots they can build. Multiply that by $12,000, which is the price of each lot, and you'll know how much the builder realized. So let's do the actual math. 550 by 970 is 533,500 square feet, which is the total lot size. If we take out the pool, we said was 80 by 100 is 8,000 square feet. The clubhouse is 6,750 square feet, and the setbacks were 25,750 square feet. Once those are removed, then we know that the builder can build on 493,000 square feet. Well, how big is each lot? Each lot was 80 by 110, which is 8,800 square feet. So if we divide those two, then we know that this builder can in fact build 56 lots. The next part of the question was, and again, remember, they didn't ask you how many lots could be built. They asked you how much money the builder would realize from this. So you've got to go to the next step, which is to take the number of lots, which is 56, times $12,000 for each lot, and in fact, the developer or builder here will realize $672,000 from the sale of this property. I'm going to point something out here that's important for a lot of questions. When you see your answers, you're always going to have an A, B, C, and D. And sometimes when people write test questions, what they'll do is they'll take a number that appears in your work and they'll plug it in here as answer A. So let's say, for example, I was writing this and I just put 56 as answer A. The reason why I might do that is because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be tempted to pick that as an answer because it's a number that you come up with in your calculator. So my tip for you here is to make sure whenever you're answering a question that you always make sure you're answering the right question. Sometimes students will say, well, I got the right number. Well, you may have gotten the right number, but if you're not answering the right question, then it in fact is the wrong number for this particular question. Let's move along to the next one here. Next one, again, very similar, says a developer is subdividing a 15-acre tract into lots measuring 80 by 110. Each lot has a perimeter of 380 feet, which means 380 feet around the outside, and will sell for $6,500. The developer has allowed 151,800 square feet for streets and sidewalks, and the question is, what is the maximum number of saleable lots that will be realized? Well, let's take a look at what we actually need from this question because there may be some extra information in here. The lot is 15 acres, or the tract is 15 acres. Each lot is 80 by 110. It says the lot has a perimeter of 380 feet. Well, stop and think about that. Is there any reason why we need that 380 feet to answer this question? The answer is no. That's just extraneous information. And when you're taking your test, remember, just because a number is included in the question does not mean that you actually have to use that number in your calculations. So let's go through and do the math on this. Again, 15 acres times 43,560 equals 653,400 square feet, which is available to build on. But 151,800 is not available due to setbacks, sidewalks, things like that. So the developer is actually left with 501,600 square feet upon which they can build. The question tells you that the lot measures 80 by 110. So 80 times 110 equals 8,800 square feet. And if you divide the 501,600, 501,600 by 8,800 per lot, you will in fact find that this developer can build 57 lots. In the previous question, it told you an amount per lot. This question is different. So in this particular question, it asks you how many lots can be developed. Once you get to that number, you know your answer is now complete.